Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today we are going to take a look around another cheap part exchange car. This one has got potential, I think, to be quite a quick turnaround and be quite satisfying because it's definitely not looking its best at the moment, but I think it's not going to take a lot of work to get it looking much better. So I thought I'd show you around, we'll check it out, make sure it drives okay before we put any time and effort into it and then see what the end result is like. So this car came in part exchange to us against our... Corsa VXR. We gave £1,100 for this, it's 105,000 miles basically, and just needs a bit of love. So let's check it out. So here it is, 2011 uh, Polo, and it's the one litre three cylinder. I'm fairly certain, I actually haven't checked, but I have just pulled it around here, and I can just tell by the sound that it is a three cylinder. It's got some hideous looking, they almost look like artistic, like that initial D style, don't they? Those, um, kind of like cartoony style hubcaps on here. And I was thinking, oh, first thing I need to do is just order some new center caps. But actually, all four are here. We only gave 1,100 quid for this, which to me, this is a very modern looking polo for 1,100 quid. I think it's even worse around here. There are, I don't know how well it's showing up, probably very well, but, and we have got a full set. I just think I'm gonna give them a little spray of silver, to be honest, because I think it would just make them look that much better very easily. I think they've had a go at DIY restoring their headlights here because they are pretty horrendous and they've got drip marks from something. Now, I don't know, maybe they've had a go at restoring them. Maybe they haven't. Maybe it's just from where they've been using crazy amounts of TFR and whatever it is at the hand car wash to clean it. I don't know, but they're definitely been an MOT advisory, I think, and they probably be an MOT failure now. Yeah, let's have a little walk around and see, you know, what we might need to do to it. So, front tyre is an auto green. Um, yeah, obviously we need to do the wheel trims. It's kind of sticking out there a little bit. But we've got loads of tread on there. The one on the rear is a dynamo. I can't even see what it is. A dynamo street high, maybe. Again, loads of tread on it. It seems to be in good condition, so I'm fairly happy with that. Bodywork looks pretty straight, and actually, for a red car, the paint looks pretty good as well. Shout out to RS Cars, whoever you are, for doing your marketing well because you got it on both number plates, you got it on the thing on there, which will probably take off to us. We've got some horrible, like sticky tree sap residue on here. It's like filthy in around the windows as well, so it's going to be really satisfying to A, clean this, but B, see it clean afterwards. And again, bodywork really straight. So I think actually, once this has got its wheel trims tidied up and, you know, a bit of tire shine on it, give it a little clean up, it's going to look really smart from the outside, especially for what we paid for it. So we've got another street high or whatever it is. Oh, is that a... I think that... I can't tell if that's a repair or if it's picked up. That might be a pin in there or... I don't know, it's just a, oh, it's like a little tree seed or something that's worn down. Bless it. Apologies, I've got a new camera, which should be very nice picture quality, much better than the GoPro. But I'm just forgetting to kind of angle it in the right places. So apologies if I'm talking about like a wheel and you're looking at a, you know, a wing mirror cover. I'm just not really paying attention to the screen like I should be. Right, so our final tyre is another auto green. So we've got matching front set and a matching rear set so i'm quite happy with that with this type of car for that sort of age and mileage etc um and again bodywork looks all pretty good around the front i can't really pick any faults with it i think that even uh, looks like it could have been chips or stuff but i just think it's a dead bug to be honest so yeah there's not really much to report on the outside it wants a bit of love but it's certainly not bad so let's have a look inside Sadly, just the one key, and it is a non-remote key, which means we're doing everything manually off the key lock here. But the remote central locking does work, at least. It needs a good valet in here, don't they all? Um, start in the back. Oh, we've got someone's earring there for a start. It's always nice to see. We've got a fair amount going on the hazards were clicking then i don't know why um it's pretty 
grubby and grim, but it actually wouldn't take too much to get it cleaned out. I think the worst part would be these carpets. I don't know, it's just like a cheap carpet and stuff gets stuck in them quite easily. You can see all the schmegginess in the center armrest and things. Steering wheel, uh, it's, it's got some decent amount of wear on it, but you know, it is what it is for what it is. Things of note really in here, I think, well, A, sadly, it's a five speed gearbox, which is a shame really. And we've got an aftermarket Sony radio, which I haven't really checked out yet. So let's fire it up. As with everything else in here, it's pretty grubby. For your safety, do not watch and operate the unit while driving. Understood. So have we got sat-nav on here? Got a rear camera, but I don't think we're connected. So I don't know how we go back from there. Home, there we go, home button. Uh, we've got Bluetooth audio, tuner, phone, USB, and auxiliary. Do we even get radio? Tracking number six, yes, we do. We only have front speakers though, it seems. But then is that just because, you know, this car does seem to be very poverty spec. I have to say, it doesn't even have air conditioning. For a 2011 car, just seems a bit ridiculous, really. And very disappointing when the weather is muggy, like it is at the moment. But I guess we would have Bluetooth because we have a microphone up here. And obviously, I guess it told us it had Bluetooth on there, didn't it, for your phone and whatever. It looks like a fairly cheap system, but I guarantee it's better than the very cheap, nasty Volkswagen one that was in here beforehand. Got in the glove box a load of crumbs. We've got our owner's manual. So there was a radio thing with a radio code for a radio that we no longer have, I would imagine. We've got our V5, which I will try and hide, which tells us that it's had three previous keepers, which is quite good, I think. I'm frequently amazed when I look through the paperwork for cars and find the paperwork from where they previously bought it. Do you know what, this is, he's done a lot of miles in this car because he bought this from Gibbons Automotive Limited in Froome for £4,745. It looks like, what would it be? January, February, March. On the 26th of March this year, so three or four months ago, and he's now part exchanged it with us for 1,100 quid. Seems ridiculous, I don't know who does that. I said as part of their notes, work to be done, MOT and any advisories, no minors to be done, in brackets, tracking, service also, brakes to be done if needed, radio to be fitted and cost confirmed, two keys. So it's funny that we've only ended up with one key after three months. So let me spin it around. I'll cover the date. Oh, sorry, the address of the customer. I'm just trying to show you the date. Like I say, despite being in the car trade and understanding that there is usually a vast difference between the trade price and a retail price and all the work that's involved in getting it to a retail-ready state and the warranty and everything that comes with it, I can't just... It still amazes me that people are willing to bin three and a half grand in a few months on what is a cheap car. It's not even a, you know, a premium car. Maybe it was his first car and he's managed to save up money quicker than he thought. But you would have thought he would have done something to, I don't know, try and sell this privately and get a little bit more for it. But who knows? That's a mindset thing, I guess. So maybe that's the type of people that keep us in business. Have a quick look through what we've got in the way of service history. We've got an MOT certificate here, which was a fail. Date of the test, 3rd of the 4th, 2024. So I assume it's been retested since then because it has got actually a long MOT on it. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, what have we got? We've got a Renault MOT receipt, an MOT receipt, tires, alignment, MOT, 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 maybe we don't have, okay, we do have, crikey. It has had oil filter, engine oil, drain plug, timing chain and oil pump kit. 
exhaust valves, inlet valves, headset, head bolts, antifreeze, head skim, and valve fitment. So I guess it had a head gasket go on it. What was the date on that? 2022. So it's had its timing chain and everything done. Is that definitely this car? Yeah, that's definitely this car. At the princely sum of £1,488.41. pence. So it's actually quite reassuring to see that we've got that. That's been done because that is pretty much the first question you get asked when you are selling a cheap car is about timing chain, timing belt, that sort of thing. If you're not spending a lot of money, then you want to know that what you're spending all the money you've got. Then you want to make sure that it's going to last you, I guess. Right, we've got more receipts for silencer. Rear drums and shoes, more tyres. Another sales receipt from Gibbons Automotive Limited. Shout out to you, you're obviously quite local to us as well. And anti-robotics. We don't have a huge amount of service history and I don't think we've got any service books anywhere else. And we've also, there may well have been a service book with this, but maybe it got lost with the other key. Who knows? All a bit odd, really. But I would say the most important thing is that we have got that timing chain and oil pump chain kit. Maybe that's a common thing on these. I don't know much about these three cylinder engines. I'll pack that all away before I lose any of it. And we'll carry on looking around the rest of this interior. Do you know one thing I'm noticing now with part exchange cars? I've been in this game now just long enough to see the change between empty fag packets and fag foils and things like that in cars to now what you tend to see is just an absolute abundance of these little plastic tip things that come out at the end of vapes. You probably wouldn't really know what they were. Just, I think, I'm, I'm pretty certain because I did used to be a vapist with a V, I might add, a vapist myself. And prior to that, I was a smoker. Your little disposable vape pens come with these little silicone tips that go in that you take out so that they don't dribble out, I guess, while they're in packaging. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll quite happily take a load of silicone tips out of vape pens over fag ash any day of the week. So if it's got to be one or the other, I take the silicone vape tips. Right, let's have a quick look under the bonnet of this thing and see what everything's looking like there. Right, well, it happens to be a Tuesday. Mark this day in the history books because I'm wrong. It doesn't happen very often, but it's happened today. It is not a one litre. It is, in fact, a 1.2, but if I'm not mistaken, it is still a three cylinder. Didn't really know they did a 1.2 three cylinder, but there it is staring at us. I can't see a fourth exhaust outlet thingy, so it must be. Let's have a check of our oil. Looks a reasonable colour. It feels a little bit sticky and jammy, so it's probably due a service, but that's fine because we can do that. And let's have a look at our coolant. Oh, looks pretty good. Nice and red and rosy in there. It seems to be at the right level. So, in the absence of anything else, that looks in pretty good condition. A lot of space in here to be looking around the engine. Don't really have any concerns. So I think what we'll do close the bonnet down on this we'll get it out on the road make sure that we're happy that it drives okay and then we'll get it cleaned serviced paint up our wheel trims and i'll get toby to do some cinematics of it looking a hundred times better so as always with these cheap part exchange cars we are going to do a quick vehicle score check we're going to go to vehiclescore.co.uk enter our registration which is sierra golf 11 delta zulu zulu and this is going to give us a score from 1 to 999 based on its age mileage and mot history and many other factors so our car scores 510 out of 999 which is about 86 below average still not too bad it has had a lot of comments on its mt by the looks of it last mileage was seen at 98,413, and tells us it's 13 years old there's loads of really useful features on here including finding out whether it's ules compliant and finding out specifications euro status is 5a 59 brake horsepower top speed of 98 miles an hour it's 160 pounds a year to tax 
and it's insurance group 4E. If we look at the MOT history, we can see that there was quite a few advisories on that last MOT. So yeah, maybe we won't get as much money as I was quite hoping, but if you were looking at buying this car, you would be armed with all the things you need to look out for to see whether any of these things have actually been fixed since its last MOT. You can use their future value estimator or their AI mechanic where you can ask it any questions and it will give you some answers and things to check on the car. On top of that, they've got loads of tips and tricks for getting cheaper insurance. But most importantly, if you are looking at handing over your hard-earned cash to buy a car, then I highly recommend you do a history report and they do them from cheaper than a coffee all the way up to the Ultimate Report Plus, which is £11.95. Don't forget, if you use my code shifting metal 20 you'll get 20% off making that £9.58. And this will check everything from whether the car's been imported or exported, whether it's been seen at a salvage auction, uh, whether it's got finance against the vehicle, whether it's been an insurance write-off, whether it's been stolen, whether it used to be a taxi, and an absolute plethora of other things that you're gonna to wanna to know. For the small price, just £9.58, it's gonna give you ultimate peace of mind when you're handing over thousands of pounds. I highly recommend you check any car before you buy it. I gotta say, I'm genuinely upset that we don't have air conditioning in here. Because it's warm today. We have got nearly a quarter of a tank of fuel there. I'm just gonna do a very quick test drive today. Because I'm roasting and it's very busy. I just wanna get a feel of the car, make sure that I'm happy that there's not something really obviously wrong with it before we spend some time on it. Obvious things I'll be looking out for would be timing chain rattle, but seeing as our timing chain's been done only a couple of years ago, I would hope that isn't the case. Seems okay so far. Brakes seem pretty good. Got that unmistakable three cylinder raspy engine noise. It does make them quite nippy though. As a man who comes from motorbikes more than cars originally, as far as passion goes anyway, my sort of theory was always like the less cylinders you've got, the more torque you've got. I think that's, I think that's fair to say. You could prove me wrong in the comments. I'm more than happy for you to do that, but if you've got a V-twin, it's less revvy, but it's more torquey versus a four cylinder. I think the same applies to cars really. Because these do feel quite sort of nippy and they pick up well, but they're never gonna break any speed records. <sighs> Our windows work, thank God, otherwise I would melt away, I think. All seems good. On the whole, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is gonna make someone a really decent little first car or a second car in the household. And the fact that it's pretty much straight, other than needing a good clean, getting the wheel trim sorted out, just giving it some finishing touches is gonna to make a world of difference. You can never underestimate the difference that cleaning a car will make. It sounds stupid, but I 100% stand by the fact that a clean car drives better than a dirty car. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is that just a, I mean, I know it is just a placebo effect in your mind, but still, you can't argue that it feels like they do drive better when they're clean. Jason is now taking people out for a test drive in the car. So I would get it in the wash bay, let the guys clean it over, we'll flick a bit of silver paint over these wheel trims, which is a bit of a budget repair for it, but for a car that is gonna be a trade, type car, we're not going to be sticking it on the forecourt of Barrow Motors. I think that's a fairly decent little fix really. And I will join you when this is clean and Toby is doing some very nice cinematic shots for you. So there we have it. It's amazing what a difference it makes just cleaning the car, spraying up the wheels. Yes, they've done like some kind of horrible reaction thing, but actually once they're on the car, it looks a hundred times better. We haven't gone really in depth with cleaning the interior, just kind of giving it a spruce up. I've taken pictures, I've sent those to Sophie and she has now got this up for basically retail money, 3,000 pounds and she's getting interest. So 
we could be on for a £1,900 profit here because we haven't really spent anything on it. I think worst case scenario, let's say we're going to make 1,500 quid gross profit out of it. That is exactly the type of part exchange that we want to have and uh, satisfying as well because mechanically it's pretty good and we've kind of been able to clean it up quite easily. In fact, the wheel trims, strangely, were silver and someone had sprayed them black. Why anyone ever sprays wheel trims black or orders black wheel trims, I don't know. It looks crap. Don't bother. Keep them silver. It looks fresh. You can actually see how big the wheels are, things like that. It just looks, maybe I'm showing my age, but I think it looks 100 times better. So that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it a like. It'll really help me out. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Again, it'll really help me out. And in return, I'm giving away a £2,000 Tag Heuer watch completely free to one of my subscribers when we hit 75,000, which is not far away at all. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments, but that will be it for this video. I will see you next time.